idea that viral medicine is maintained and have improved quality of life of our membership uh, through using cannabis. And uh, I guess in conclusion, I'd like to say that the endocannabinoids I consider to be a, a, a yet untapped, uh, uh, unrecognized, but yet a major med medical discovery. And it may open the way for the first time in medical history, medical history being only 90 years old since the pharmaceutical industry began. That type of medical history will, through studying the endocannabinoid system, realize finally that a single compound cannot elicit the effect that a multitude of compounds around the receptor can have. For example, uh, marinol is synthetic THC, synthetic delta 9 THC. You put that into a biological system, you'll get some pain relief, some anti-tremor relief, and you'll get metabolites formed from the breakdown of that synthetic compound. If you put some DC bud extract into the same biological system, you'll get THC, CBN, CBD, all banging around that receptor looking for a place to bind, modulating the effect of THC, and you'll get a different efficacy. You won't get the same breakdown products from a multitude of molecules that you get from a single molecule. A single synthetic molecule are often toxic, and your biological systems don't know what they are and, and don't like them. I believe that cannabis is a herbal medicine. It's the most profoundly useful, profoundly efficacious herbal medicine I've ever come across. But I believe it's a whole plant medicine and should be used that way, and we're, we are studying it that way. Although we're applying high-tech analytical techniques to it, we're still treating it as a whole plant herbal medicine. And there's some good news on the horizon. There recently a bill called Bill C-51 has caused a lot of stink around people that are involved in natural products and herbal medicines because it could mean the end to these traditional medicines. If it was allowed to go through and Stephen Harper had his way. Since we don't have a minority the government, it's less likely to go through but regardless, there's a group of people that I've been associated with for many years now that has started another charter of freedom, as it's called, which is proposing to put another ministry in our parliament next to the Ministry of Health. This new ministry will be called the Ministry of Wellness. The Ministry of Health will act look as Health Canada does after all the synthetic pharmaceutical drugs that are on the market. The Ministry of Wellness will look into <coughs> the herbals, traditional uh, natural medicines. If indeed this ministry could be formed, and there is a, a very serious lawyer-written charter that these people have come up with that will be put into Parliament when it comes into session again. If indeed that ministry is formed, it will allow the way for cannabis, plus all of the other 20,000 herbal medications that have been pulled off the market in the last five years. It will allow us access to them. <coughs> I am one that believes that you can put into your body what you think will make you well. You have the right to choose that. You have the right to educate yourself on it. You have the right to access it. Hopefully this Ministry of Wellness will be formed in, and we can all enjoy that type of freedom in the future. Um, it, I see pharmaceutical drugs, herbal medicines running side by side in the future, and people can choose which they want to use. Um, and I think with that, I am about up to time, and I'll close, and I'll answer any questions. Yeah, we got four minutes for questions here. I have a question. Um, you said that non, like, what you say, regulated, like brownies could be dangerous. 
or no, I'm like standardized. Standardized, yeah. Um, how can you standardize the brownies that you make? You have to send it to Dr. Paul. Or find someone with a lab that can measure THC. It's pretty trial anywhere, Kevin. Unstandardized brownies. Measure. They won't kill you. <laughs> no, but like, if you freak someone out, it wouldn't be used to it. Yeah, yeah. so much. Yeah. 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 What interested you in pursuing a career like this? <laughs> Next lecture. I have yeah. to do it. I can't do anything else. Yeah. This is what I have to do. Um, it evolved over time, um, but I don't go to work. I, I go and discover and play. This is what I got to do. I can't <laughs> do anything else. I don't know what else to do. You mentioned that. Uh, Cannabis use has been shown to help reduce dependency on antidepressants. Is that kind of that? That seems kind of counterintuitive to general conventional wisdom on depression and its relation to marijuana. Like a lot of people I've talked to have like, I don't want to do it because it makes me all depressed afterwards. Is that? Is there anything in there that you can say more about? Or? Um, there are thousands of strains of cannabis, and each one holds a slightly different pharmacology and effect. If a per person's getting depressed smoking cannabis, I suggest they try another strain. Um, we treat people with severe depression using cannabis, but we're also looking at the strain. Uh, strain selection and strain specificity are <coughs> as important as standardization for the effect. You can put somebody through the pinhole with the wrong strain, too. You get the, completely the wrong effect that they expect. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the reasons I'm standing here, too. The strain specificity of cannabis. Hillary Black told me about that years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, Robin is in that first and then Christian, but I'm going to try to squeeze one in too, and then that'll have to be it. Right, so, um, on your study with the, the man with the ADHD, what did you find? I have a boy making capsules in my lab who's been diagnosed with severe ADHD, and he would never know it. Yeah. But he uses cannabis, but he focuses on making caps, that's all he does. He doesn't move all day long. Yeah. Uh, his father is the same. His father also derives tremendous benefit from cannabis, and I have not known either not to use it. Um, I have recently started working with a girl who lives in the Queen Charlotte Islands who has ADHD. She's been using the capsules for a month and wrote a week ago saying that her teachers want her to keep using what she's using and she should get more. <laughs> I actually have two questions. Um, my first question is if you've heard anything about the Rick Simpson story and if the Green Cross is working with him to help his cause at all. Rick Simpson, he's from out east from the American Revolution. I would think I've got a perfect <laughs> answer for yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, we're working on that. Yeah, we're, we're actually working on a connection. Rick is doing a presentation, I think, at Dalhousie University pretty soon here. And so we're going to try to get him a webcam. And just like we do a live broadcast from here, he's going to use our kind of networks for Hempology. And we're going to be broadcasting Rick Simpson with Hempology from Halifax very soon. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, good. So we're starting to build those connections ourselves. I, I, I get the sense. And, and Rick's way up there. I get the sense you're not familiar with Rick too much yet. But he makes his own cannabis oil. I haven't figured that one out too much. If you have another question, I'm sorry. You're going to have to have on. He's coming to 420. Okay. He's just, 420 is coming on. And so we've got to Thank you very much for coming.
lecture is uh, the first time ever I'm doing a lecture on cannabis activism. Yeah. I just realized that, like, just so, uh, yeah, next week I'm going to help teach everybody how to be active and stuff. So thanks again, Paul, uh, and uh, have a great day, everybody.